Hey everybody, it's Marianne from Short Sale Mitigation and I am speaking to you today about the wonderful world of short sales and I wanted to um, put this presentation together because we had a lot of brokerages um, and independent licensees that were asking for information on short sales um, that haven't been able to attend one of our classes. And um, of course, I want to give you the most information possible so you can be successful in listing your short sales. So we've come together with a little bit of a slideshow, an overview on how to A, list short sales, and B, specifically list short sale mitigation short sales so that you can be successful from the onset of your process. So anyway, uh, I'm going to try to get right to it because there's a lot of information to go over and um, if you have questions, you can always email me after. So uh, Nick and I started short sale mitigation in 2010 after um, realizing that trying to go through some attorneys and other people to help assist in negotiating short sales was um, very tough. Uh, you're waiting, there wasn't a lot of communication, so uh, we had both negotiated short sales independently and worked in short sales independently and then came together and formed the company in 2010. So we've been together for some time now. We know our stuff. We've taught classes at a lot of association of realtors um, and we have actually trained attorneys as well. Um, we've taught at brokerages uh, many times. So and um, we are able to give CEUs in some cases in Massachusetts if you attend one of our short sale classes. What we're going to go over today is how to determine a short sale, um, the best way to prepare for your short sale, who's involved, how to hand it off, and best practices. So you are an agent and you're out in the um, and you're out marketing and you find a homeowner and they want to sell their property. The best way to establish if it is a short sale is you're going to find out um, from the homeowner what they owe on the property. And if you really want to establish that, you want a payoff notice or a payoff uh, statement from the homeowner from every mortgage they have on title. Now, it's interesting in a short sale how many people will tell you they only have one mortgage or um, they may only have two mortgages. Um, and sometimes we pull title and there's a mortgage and a couple executions or a mortgage, two mortgages or an undischarged mortgage. These are all issues that have to be dealt with when you're listing the short sale property or especially if you have a homeowner who filed bankruptcy and thinks, hey, I'm going to sell my property. Um, I don't have any debt associated with the count and they think mortgages shouldn't be on title, but these liens still aren't title. Um, so you want to find out what they owe. Now, if the value that you establish for the property is less than what they owe, it's probably a short sale. Now, do they have a hardship? You cannot just walk away. You can't just say, I want to get away from this house because I owe more than it's worth. Um, banks don't like that. They'll not approve a short sale. You want to make sure there's an actual hardship involved. You know, have they had income loss? Was there a death in the family? Was there a divorce? And if you're unsure, you can always call me. That is what we're here for. Um, I will vet the sale and see if we can set it up in the best possible way for you to get it approved. So now you've found out it's a short sale, you want to get your listing ready. Um, here's the things that you really need to keep in mind when you list the short sale. It has to be listed subject to third party approval because the bank has to approve the overall purchase price or approve the sale in, in its entirety. It has to be sold as is because in most cases, sellers of a short sale are not going to be fixing properties. That means if you have an FHA buyer that comes in and there's peeling paint on the property, that homeowner probably is not going to be repainting the property to help that FHA buyer. They usually do not have the means or the funds available to do that. So all properties are sold as is. If the buyer wants the property and they have a specific type of loan that requires something has to be fixed, that's on the buyer. The buyer is typically in our sales responsible for the smoke certificate and the payment of Title V if necessary. That means, again, the seller does not have the funds or means to do these things, so the buyer would be doing these. The buyer is paying our fee, the mitigation fee. Um, they are going to be cutting us a check at closing at the delivery of the deed. We get paid, um, just like you as a listing agent, only if the sale goes through. Um, and that is outlined in the mitigation packet if you work with us. 
We typically um, ask you to set the buyer's agent commission at 2%. I'll explain that in a little while um, and why we ask that. And then, of course, when you set up your listing online or on MLS, you want to attach the SSM buyer packet and make sure any and all offers from a buyer, they fill out that packet in its entirety, including the offer form. I may say this two or three times. So short sale mitigation. At this point, um, once we hear from you and we decide it's a short sale, we are going to be in researching the investor of the loan to find out if there's important factors that go into the listing of that sale. Uh, we're going to be pulling title to see if there are executions, judgments, liens, or anything that hasn't been disclosed to us by the seller. We're setting up the file in our office. We're coordinating documents from the seller. We are trying to eliminate any issue that would prevent the file from closing. Things that you want to consider when you're listing your property. Does the owner have these executions on titles? Um, is it a condo? Are there condo dues? Do they owe utilities? Does the owner you know, owe the Mass Department of Revenue or the IRS? These are all things that you need to consider when you list your property because many times um, the buyer ends up having to pay a portion or some of these or all of these. Um, utilities cannot be negotiated. If there is outstanding um, septic, uh, or water by the town, that is a, not a negotiable item. Most of the other stuff is negotiable on this list, um, and we do negotiate these other items, but it's important to know that sometimes they can't be negotiated, and the buyer, again, would be responsible for bringing these items to closing because, or payment for these items, uh, or a lot of these items, because the seller, again, most likely has a hardship that prevents them from paying um, again, we'll go over, it has to be sold as is, it's got to be subject to third party approval, this has to be on MLS. The mitigation fee added and disclosed somewhere on your listing, and I'm going to go over the co-broke now. The reason we suggest that you co-broke at a 2% amount is because if the lender slashes a traditional commission, which is 6% to 5%, and you have advertised a 3% co-broke on MLS, guess who gets 2%? You do, which is a little bit tough because you do a lot of the work. Um, so I can't force you to give a co-broke a 2%. It really is um, up to you, but keep in mind, if the lender slashes the commission and we can't get a full 6%, then you will be getting 2%. Things to consider when a buyer presents an offer on the property. Make sure that the mitigation packet that I gave you is fully filled out and it's entirely, make sure you have each sheet including the offer to purchase that's included in the package. If the buyer does not include the offer to purchase or does not include the mitigation information, then you should reject the offer. Uh, we will go over the offers uh, in our office before we have the seller execute any. The lenders ask for bank statements if a buyer is cash or proof of funds. Um, they need the name on the statement usually to match the name on the purchase contract or offer to purchase. So keep that in mind when someone is telling you they're buying a property for cash, you're going to be looking for um, the proof of funds. And of course we can do that as well. And take your total purchase price and we're going to minus out maybe some of the extras that the buyer has to pay. So here's an example. You have a property, the buyer wants to pay 400000 for the property. Uh, however, there is $12,000 in executions, judgments, condo dues, etc. The buyer at that point, if they want to, can write their offer for $388,000 to the bank because they're going to be bringing that $12,000 to closing. And again, these are estimates. We don't know final numbers up front, although I wish we did. So when you're getting your buyer information, usually we need the certificate of organization for the buyer or trust documents if it's an LLC. Um, you're going to then get all of the information together. We're going to prepare for the BPO. The buyer's agent can help you in that and provide inspection reports, repair estimates, pull comps, and write a cover letter. Um, actually, you're going to write the cover letter. but. And then after it goes under contract, when everybody's agreed to the final um, terms, you're going to take the lockbox off the property, remove that lockbox because 
um, you don't want anyone to access the property without you at this point. So what's happening once you get all of these documents together? Um, we are going to submit the offer to purchase after it's executed by the seller to the attorney to draft. Um, we're going to review all these offers before they're executed by the seller, but once it's executed, we will ask the attorney for uh, the purchase contract to be generated. If there are issues that we find out, we're going to discuss it with you, the listing agent, meaning title issues or something that could prevent the sale. Um, the buyer, before the purchase contract is executed, so in between the offer and the purchase contract, usually there's some type of seven or 10 or 14 day window, the buyer should be performing their due diligence at this time, inspections, et cetera. Now, if the buyer finds out an issue, we're gonna negotiate, renegotiate the terms of the offer. That's what happens in a, in a sale. If you find out issues, you may renegotiate a purchase price because there's bigger issues than we all thought. And that would happen obviously after the inspection. And once the purchase contract is executed by all parties, we're gonna start the negotiation of the short sale. We don't usually do this unless there's an auction on the property until the purchase contract is executed because some buyers fall out and you don't wanna start the short sale prematurely. Okay, here's my favorite part that a lot of listing agents still don't understand, but it is the most important piece of the short sale, the most important piece, which is the valuation. Once everything is submitted to the bank, then you prep for your value package. What is the value package? Well, the bank, the seller's lender, is going to order a valuation, and that could be in the form of appraisal or a BPO by an agent. You, as the listing agent, will meet that person at the property and walk them through. However, if you're smart, you're going to email them a packet of information about the property before they even step foot in the home because they don't know why they're going there. They just know they got an order from a third party company to go do a value on this property. They may not know it's a short sale. They may not know it's a distressed property. They may not know the heating system is broken. They may not know the roof is gone. They may not know there's structural damage, structural damage. And this is information that you'll want to go over with them because um, these things all affect the value and including the liens. So if there's several liens on title that does affect the value. So the value package is the most important part of the sale to me. So what do you include in a value package, a good value package? Well, it's these items here. If you can get your hands on this stuff, um, and again, the buyer can help, is you wanna put together the package with contractor reports, septic inspection, engineering reports, plumbing issues, painting, landscaping, whatever estimates that the buyer comes up with for you or that affect the value you want to take. So if there are repair estimates, roofing bids, carpeting, whatever you have to do, get this information together in a packet because you're going to give it to the valuation agent, whether this is an appraiser or a BPO agent. You want this ahead of time, ahead before the bank goes out. Um, you're going to put together a killer cover letter from the listing agent, that's from you. You're going to highlight key points influencing the value. You're gonna have comps, you're gonna get contact info from the agent, including their license number from the valuation agent, and you're gonna confirm that they're actually a licensed person. Um, and when you set the appointment, you're gonna have this value package ready. Um, and the reason it's important to find out if the person coming to do the valuation is actually um, a licensed agent is because we've had situations where there have been picture takers, where a licensed agent is asking someone to just go to take pictures of the property, they don't step foot in the property, and then they value it, which is really not a great thing to do. You want the person who's coming to the property to be the same person that's gonna be valuing the property. And if you find out otherwise, then you let me know. So here's an example of a great cover letter. Um, you're going to write a letter and explain why the value is what it is and support the buyer's offer price. And you're gonna highlight key information that you think is important. Maybe the number of showings. We've had no showings on the property. Um, 
maybe uh, you there's other things and this person here and I blocked out his information but he went through an itemized list of all the issues with the property and this agent here went through um, condos in a building and pulled every sold comp I believe in the last six months and highlighted the actual comparables um, these were all successful cover letters so you're going to set up a cover letter introduce yourself and tell the world why or why not or why the buyer's offer price is supported with key issues what are those things and again the buyer's agent can help you with this information and it's it's best if you put it on letterhead it shows a little bit more professionalism and you sign it so the value package should include at least I would say three to six comps uh, they need to be sold comps that's it nothing else sold they have to be sold comps let's say you pull comps and you cannot find one in the town that you're looking in you can go outside of the town but just stay close by or let's say your price on your property is lower than the comps on the market if the next three comps um, they're comparable but they have issues so maybe your comp is uninhabitable and the next comp that is on MLS is habitable you can use red and just say this is the difference in the price of the property this is a comp but the reason it's not a true comp is because this comp here on MLS is habitable and our comp is not take pictures of the property if there's issues with the property you want to take pictures of all those little issues and highlight them for the bank uh, for the bank's valuation agent it's important to show what you've seen and what can affect the value on the property so this agent actually did a PowerPoint presentation of pictures and highlighted all of the issues this was one of the most amazing valuation packets I've ever seen she just kept going on with safety code violations and then she highlighted again next to each of her pictures what the issue was again this is all in your value packet that we're going to give to the bank's valuation agent um, take outside pictures take interior pictures outline anything that affects the value structures utilities septic roof um, this agent again pulled a crime report she showed that there was a lot of crime in the area um, I've had some people put together a valuation report that shows the sex offenders that are right nearby um, you're going to include other liens and executions that are on the property if there's a five thousand or ten thousand or twenty five thousand dollar execution on the property my company will have a copy of that execution you can use that in your value report um, anything that you see here can be used and even the hardship letter because again the valuation agent from the bank really doesn't know why they're there it's important if it is uh, a distressed property they understand it's a distressed property and you can include the hardship letter when your report is done you're going to output the PDF or output it as a PDF it's really important that your report that you put together is all in one PDF you do not want to have five different attachments and send it to a valuation agent and expect them to open all of it up you're going to start the valuation package with your cover letter you're going to put your comps you're going to put your pictures you're going to put your repair estimates and anything else that supports the value of the property and you can write right in the cover letter why you think that the buyer's offer price is a great offer price for the property again pull the lockbox off the property you don't want anyone going to the property and letting themselves in without you get the email address of the valuation agent coming to the property because you're going to email them this PDF before they go to the property when they call you to set up the appointment it's very easy to say hey I set up my appointments via email um, would you please give me your email address so I can confirm the appointment and when you confirm the time that you're meeting the person at the property send them the package the value package because it's super important that they see before they set foot in the property what you see um, again they may not it's not their fault they don't know why they're going there um, they're just there to do a valuation and you want to make sure it's an accurate valuation
So again, just to go over some things, verify the person coming as a licensed agent. If they're not licensed, let me know. Um, you can do that by either looking it up online by the name of the person that you uh, were given. And when you send an email with your valuation package, you can even say, bring uh, your license to the appointment in the subject line. That's what I've done on some occasions where I've said, hey, I'm going to meet you Thursday at 3 o'clock in the subject line. Please bring photo ID. And I just think for a safety issue now, um, for realtors in this market, you never know what you're going to meet. And um, if the other person on the other end, for any reason, is a little bit shady, and they see that you need a photo ID to confirm who they are, they may think twice about doing anything that's, that's shady. Um, or they may cancel the appointment. I've had that happen. You can ask for an email and let them know um, that's how you confirm your appointments. We've already gone over that. And then in addition to emailing them the PDF of the valuation report, you are also going to bring them a hard copy and hand it to them. At this point, everything goes back to the bank. The bank will then likely counter your offer. Again, the bank's goal and the buyer's goal are probably two different things. The bank wants the most amount of money the buyer probably wants to get the property for the least amount. So the goal is to meet in the middle somewhere so that everybody's happy. Um, if the bank wants information from anybody, please return it within 24 to 48 hours. Um, usually when you set up your listing, sometimes if it's an FHA file, they require some verbiage in the listing agreement. Um, if we didn't capture that up front and we need that added in, get it back to us as soon as possible because that just holds up the sale longer. Um, the average time frame for a non-government sponsored enterprise, you're talking about three months to approval. Uh, Freddie Fannie is usually two to three months to approval and FHA loans take significantly longer to approve because they have a much more tedious process. They also expect you to list for 15 days on the market. Um, Freddie and Fannie is five days, including a weekend. These are things that I'll discuss with you once you set up your short sale listing. Um, what happens if your sale doesn't go through? Well, we're going to find out why. Um, if it's a value issue, we're going to relist at the bank's proposed price and try to get a new buyer in. If we can't, then we're going to have you slowly drop the price and show the bank why it's not worth what they think it is. Um, if it's something else, we will try to address and continue the sale. Here are some tips for you. SSM pulls title up front. Um, that's really important. And that's because we want to capture any issues that may need to be included in the disclosure and in the listing. We vet the sale to clear the issues. Be reasonable with your listing price. Um, I've had agents go for the highest price possible. Um, that isn't always the best po you know, policy. And I've seen agents go for the lowest price possible, and that's not always the best policy either. Um, look at the market value. Try to stay within the market value. If there's reasons you need to go under or over, we can talk about it. Um, buyers and buyer's agent, they can assist you on the valuation and providing a bunch of that information in the value uh, report and issues with the property and expect the bank to counter know your numbers. So uh, in summary, you're going to give us a call if you're, we're gonna assist you in the sale and we're gonna be looped in right at the beginning of the listing. We can go over the entire listing and the process with you. You wanna keep your rapport and your relationship with the seller throughout the process. Um, I've seen agents suddenly disappear and the seller says, hey, what's going on? Why haven't I heard from my agent? Blah, blah, blah. Um, Obviously, you want to keep that rapport with the seller. The buyer does their homework on the valuation and the issues with the property, and they work with you on coming up with the value, value packet. It's really important to get that packet done and expect the bank to counter and know your numbers. Um, if you have questions on any portion of this, um, this is as quick as I could get it done. I apologize. Um, there's so much more to short sales than what I just did in this 25-minute presentation. So 
please keep that in mind. Uh, you can call me, you can email me. Uh, definitely let us know if you have issues or questions. That's what we're here for. Uh, we list all throughout Massachusetts. We have listings all throughout Massachusetts with different um, agents. We also do our own marketing. So if we develop a good relationship with an agent that has worked with us multiple times, we'll give our listings to those agents that we trust and we know can do a great job just so that you know a little bit about us. Um, but we're definitely here to answer your questions and help you get a short sale closed. Um, my contact information is here. I thank you for allowing me to really fly through this program today. And uh, again, if you have any questions, you're going to give me a call. And um, we look forward to working with you. Thanks, gang.